Hello viewers, welcome to Candid Conversations with Ganesh Kupala. First of all, thank you so much for amazing response you have given to the show. And continuing that, I have, you would have heard me speaking to various leaders across the globe and influential Indians and the British politicians as well. Today, I have a surprise for you. I have actually, um, you know, been working on influential people across the globe to bring to my audience, to inspire people. And in my search, we found Nimisha Madhwani ji. Uh, Nimisha ji, you will be a first diplomat on my show. I'm personally uh, very inspired by your story and you know what you have done so far. So thank you so much for accepting to do this with us first of all. And um, thanks, thank you so much for hosting us in the Uganda house. All right. Um, it's my pleasure. So Nimisha ji, as um, you know, the, as you would have heard me saying, it's candid conversations with Ganesh Kupala. So we would love to hear more from you uh, in terms of like your journey and you know how you started, what your role is, and all of that, right? So to start with, could you please give a quick introduction of yourself so that you know my audience knows who you are? First of all, Ganesh, thank you so much for this opportunity to share um, about Uganda. Yeah, this beautiful country of Uganda the island of stability, heaven on earth. We also call it the Pearl of Africa, where I am a fourth generation Ugandan. Mm -hmm. My family left Porbandar uh, over a hundred years ago and uh, went into Uganda. My grandfather, Muljibai, with his uh, brothers uh, uh, and uh, Vitaldas, Haridas, that's how the history, and then generations later, as his children, I'm the daughter of late Jan Madvani, uh, niece of Manu, late Manubai Madvani, and uh, the family continues, and daughter of Mama Mina Madvani. And uh, today I work for the government of Uganda, mm -hmm. and it's a great honor to represent a nation, my nation, Uganda, with the leadership of His Excellency President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, who has really worked hard under his leadership to unite a country that was under turmoil. And as you know, many Ugandans were expelled, but 450,000 Ugandans were killed by Idi Amin. So we're lucky as Asians who were thrown out and mm. had opportunity to build lives again. And today those Ugandan Asians here in the UK contribute to about 6% of UK's GDP. And Ugandan Asians are now part of our Ugandan diaspora. Mm -hmm. And we are looking forward to welcoming them to Uganda to visit, to invest in the areas of agriculture, mining, IT, tourism, mm -hmm. uh, across the board, processing. So there's a huge opportunity. And we, that's what I like to do. And that's what I'm here to do. It's a, a long journey. And uh, Ganesh, you know, uh, you're Indian origin, mm -hmm. I'm an Indian origin, and for women, it's, uh, it's very difficult, and it shows that President Museveni had great respect yeah. for a Gujarati girl from a big joint family mm. to come and to be sent and, and work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Uganda, and to um, help rebuild a nation that was destroyed. So I feel very honored uh, with the trust that everybody has uh, shown to me and uh, the president uh, of Uganda, the government and the people of Uganda. And I'm very, um, also very honored uh, that the British uh, who housed me when we were refugees mm -hmm. have welcomed me back as a high commissioner of Uganda. Brilliant. So and I'm also ambassador of Uganda to Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great honor uh, to represent the two nations. Yeah, it, it is indeed great honor. And uh, Nimisha ji, uh, we just want to understand how did this journey start for you? I, as in like you mentioned about big names and you know, in my research I have seen that Madhwani is a very big name in Uganda and you are all business people fundamentally, right? How did you land into public services and how did you come into this uh, role? Well, in Uganda, you know, we have a lot of good Indian, good, strong U Indian Ugandan families. Yeah. There's the Vaderas, there's the Metas, there's the Makwano, yeah. there's Uparelia, there's some, uh, some Patels. There. There, mm. It's a whole growing community. Now we have a new migrant community that's mm. also there from South India, Hyderabad. 
So you can see the Gujaratis and the melting pot, the Gujarati is, little Uganda is now in Harrow yeah. and Wembley and, um, yeah, so so they're, and, and they're all over uh, in, in the United Kingdom, Sweden, Denmark, and many Ugandan uh, indigenous as well. So we're now going to be soon, I believe, a tribe in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So how did the journey start? The journey started because President Museveni um, uh, took over the country from, mm -hmm. by, by fighting as a uh, revolutionary with 27 uh, comrades uh, to overthrow the, um, rei the reign of political reign of Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. And to rebuild a nation, you bring in, uh, it was a very embracing policy. Mm -hmm. So it was all party, politics, all people, all Ugandans. And my family is intrinsically Ugandan. I'm fourth. I'm born in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. I'm bred in Uganda, or kicked out of Uganda, <laughs> and I now work for the government. You know, and I think it's a great honor. So that's my journey. I started first in Washington as okay. first secretary for Washington. I went to India for the whole of Southeast Asia, and I was transferred to uh, France, to uh, the peninsula, Spain, Portugal. Mm. We worked there. And then from there to the Middle East, in the Emirates. We have learned why the world has changed yeah. dramatically. But investment in Uganda has grown. Yeah. And from Emirates, I went to Nordic countries, and I've come to United Kingdom and Ireland. And you pretty much covered the whole so you world. you can imagine how <laughs> India has grown yeah. from the time I was in India as High Commissioner in 2006 7 And Prime Minister Modi has been to Uganda twice. So you can yeah. imagine. He came as a chief minister of Gujarat. Mm -hmm. He was invited and he brought in investors with him. And now we're hoping that India will do even more with investors. Yeah. Um, and we have a very strong relationship with the Gulf. We have an excellent relationship with the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. a historical relationship, <clears throat> very friendly. Uh, United States. So, uh, and now President Museveni is the chairman of the non-aligned movement, mm -hmm. G77 plus China, uh, which we hosted in January. So that's, uh, he's the chairman of, uh, and the president, I would say, of 6.5 billion people. Wow. So he's got a larger population under him than many countries in the world, I think, put together. Brilliant. So we have a huge opportunity yeah. of this. And it shows that Uganda is on a, a, a nation of peace and stability. Friendly, I think we have one of the most friendly nations indeed, in the world. Indeed, you are. Definitely and we're are. looking forward to all of you visiting <laughs> yeah. us. We issue visas in two days. Please yeah. apply online. It's $50 and uh, two, three days you get your visas. So yeah, yeah. I know we have been talking about Indian business network and Ugandan business Absolutely. network connects as well. Brilliant. So in your current role, uh, Nimisha Ji, what, like as a high commissioner and also ambassador to uh, Ireland as well, so what's your day-to-day -day looks like and what kind of... Uh, I mean, I know it's, it's a bigger role and a lot of responsibilities. But what's your, like, if your top three priorities, if you have to say, uh, as a High Commissioner, what do you the do? The main top priorities are, of course, the strengthening of the bilateral relationships between the countries, trade, mm -hmm. investment, tourism. We want UK, we want uh, EU. EU is, has already got the EU uh, trade treaty with Africa, which is everything but arms. We would like the British now to also embrace and enact a policy where we have 100% duty-free, quota-free products for our markets mm -hmm. so that our agricultural products can come into the country. As long as they meet all the standards of phytosanitary, etc., can come into um, the country. We want to build relationship where UK uh, export finance will strengthen further uh, the, the financing of our infrastructure projects, such as the oil and the gas areas where mm -hmm. we need infrastructure oil, I mean, sorry, infrastructure roads, uh, you know, power generation, solar generation, green energy, green technology. And uh, agriculture is a big focus because 80% uh, of 45 million people mm -hmm. are in agriculture. It's agrarian based. And we have, uh, you know, our avocado is the size of a, a proper football mm -hmm. so you, and full of nutrition and a mango and a pineapple. One, one pineapple is about that big yeah. and you can get two liters of juice, fresh juice, you know, with no additive. So you can just, and then the pulp you can use into fruits and you don't have to throw it away or you, and then the peel 
you turn it into biogas. Mm -hmm. So these are huge opportunities for those people who are interested. And we're interested in, in, in developing those uh, relationships Brilliant. further and further. UK, Uganda, uh, Northern Ireland, we have um, um, at least uh, 400 to 500 uh, million pounds worth of export product finance towards projects, really? uh, railways, etc. We are also accredited here to the International Maritime Organization. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, you know, had to look at the waterways. Whilst Uganda is landlocked, mm -hmm. we still have all our products come through the Indian Ocean. And South Africa so we also have to, we are contributors. We participate in the maritime organization meetings and functions. And we also have all the great lakes in our region. So we look at security aspects of our lakes because we have some of the best. I'm vegetarian, pure, <laughs> no meat, no fish. Uh, but we, I'm told we have some of the best um, uh, freshwater fish, mm -hmm. uh, Nile, uh, Nile perch, which is about 10 kilos, mm -hmm. one big one, uh, and uh, tilapia. And then you have some of the baby fishes. So we Brilliant. have fish farming opportunities. So those who love fish. Uh, and uh, we have the unique uh, <coughs> longhorn cows, mm -hmm. uh, which have, uh, are both dairy and uh, beef. And so oh, we okay. look for export markets for these products of milk, so we have big milk companies, dairy, yogurt, Danan is up there involved in some companies as a board members with Kenya and then into Uganda. And we have our own indigenous, there's a family called um, Kotecha, mm -hmm. they are the head of Pearl Dairy. Uh, there's uh, other com uh, another in company that's investor from India called Emos Dairies mm -hmm. and, and uh, many companies. So in the dairy business and then in the beef business. And President Museveni himself is a is a cattle man, as he calls mm. himself, the man with a hat. Um, he has uh, beautiful longhorn cows, and uh, the western we we have a cattle corridor in western mm. Uganda. Uh, and then tourism, we yeah. have huge, beautiful, beautiful country. It's green and lush, and uh, our ancestors, the gorillas, but also all the big animals. We have over six, uh, over two thousand species of birds. Some mm -hmm. birds that are only unique to Uganda. Okay. So huge, huge spectrum of opportunity. I think you also missed out on the coffee. Absolutely, People I forgot say, the coffee. Yeah. Yes, so we have uh, coffee, tea, uh, vanilla. Yeah. Uh, some of the best coffee in the world, Arabica. Oh yeah. Uh, we have the mountain grown. We also have the uh, highland grown. So Brilliant. we have huge, uh, uh, many, many um, uh, farmers who grow coffee. So looking to process those coffees and looking for markets for our coffees, actually. Brilliant. So in, and in one of the gifts that we try to give to everybody when we meet you is we try to give you our, uh, the dry pineapples that yeah. are grown in U Uganda and processed there, sold by uh, uh, an English gentleman, Grandma's Gardens in, mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. Uh, coffees, uh, various different types of coffees grown and, and uh, processed in Uganda, packaged. Uh, including a, something called the Gorilla Coffee. Then we have honey. Um, so coffee, honey, sugar, of course. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of sugar. Um, so in terms of hunger, you will never go hungry in Uganda. <laughs> Brilliant. So in your term uh, of being here for a few years, if you have to look, call out any landmark you know, investments or in terms of the bilateral relationship between UK and Uganda, uh, were there any uh, specific... Um, investment opportunities that like both the countries have seen? Of course, well, I've only been here a year and a half yeah. so far, but I inherited from my predecessor mm -hmm. uh, that they were already working again with United Kingdom Export Finance, with okay. other trade organizations. So, of course, enhancing a project, large scale projects mm -hmm. with the, with the, on the government side um, and working together for, as I said earlier, railways, roads, the oil and gas sector, mm -hmm. um, and uh, developing the, the tourist industry, uh, uh, airline airline business. So now we have Uganda Airlines. Okay, that's uh, good. Uganda Airlines flies from uh, Uganda to Bombay directly okay. and back, and it goes to uh, Dubai, back, mm -hmm. Guangzhou, and we're hoping by the end of uh, 2024, we'll have direct flights for, to London, London. Okay. and back. And um, we hope that they'll also go to <coughs> Ireland uh, because Ireland is an EU country mm -hmm. and being a European Union country, it's uh, products and cargo. We also have fresh flowers that come to Europe. Mm -hmm. They go to the Netherlands. So instead of 
stopping in London and they clear the cargo and they goes to Ireland. And if Uganda Airlines goes direct, then the cargo, which yeah. is avocados, pineapples, chilies, yeah. uh, flowers, etc., all go directly. And then the flight can uh, have flight clearance to go on go to New York, which is only a four hour flight from Brilliant. Shannon. Brilliant. So, so a lot to look huge, forward to. Yes, basically. yes. And then, of course, with the UK for security, we have a very good, uh, you know, training programs and uh, great support for us in, uh, you know, we have a strong military now in Uganda, we're working in Somalia in the region. Mm -hmm. And Ganesh, you know, the market, we have a market of around 450 million people in the East Africa community. Mm -hmm. So you've got a big ready-made market. I mean, India is 1.3 yeah. billion, so yeah. we are talking about almost half. Yeah. Okay, a little bit less than half, <laughs> being that you're the accountant too. <laughs> All right. So, um, in terms of like you, you as the High Commissioner or the, you know, the Uganda House, so what do you do in terms of initiatives? Do you have any initiatives that actually encourages the bilateral relationship? Because sitting in London, it's you only not only have access to UK, but you have access to the across the world because London is the financial capital of the world and everyone comes and does business here. Like you have huge business people who are from Indian origin. You there are a bunch of others from African, other African nations as well here. So, what are the kind of initiatives that you do to kind of connect the two worlds? Well, of course, you know, you as a, as a Uganda House. First of all, welcome to Uganda House. <laughs> Thank you. You know, this is a, a, a iconic building in yeah. Trafalgar Square. Yeah. We have. Uh, uh, Lord Nelson, yeah. uh, in the column over there, looking down into the office, and he <laughs> salutes me every morning, and we, we <laughs> greet each other back as friends. And uh, we, of course, it's it's on around the products I've told you. We've mm -hmm. like we're looking for Sainsbury's, we're looking yeah. for Aldi, we look for the Indian fruit and vegetable shops in yeah. Harrow, fresh because we have all these fresh products. Yeah. So the, having direct access for our products to come into the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and Ireland is very, very important. Yeah. And so, you know, having a bilateral, uh, you know, uh, um, um, duty-free, quota-free, mo uh, um, free trade uh, uh, yeah. is very, very important. So that's what we really want to do. So now okay. United Kingdom has left the EU. Mm -hmm. So we have to start afresh, whereas so before it was in the already EU. Had. So, yeah. so that's why it takes a little bit longer. Okay. So, but uh, were there any talks in terms of having free trade agreement between Uganda and the UK? Yes, yes, they've yeah. already, uh, uh, the British have been very good yeah. uh, in terms of uh, looking towards moving. We've got to 99% uh, mm. duty free, but we want it excise tax free. We want the total excise tax to be removed from, okay. from the f uh, agricultural products that are already uh, processed and are able to be sold in the, in the markets. Brilliant, brilliant. It is and very, very important, you know. Yeah, because then you also have a full competitive world. Because, uh, yeah. say, for example, you have a vanilla that's made in Madagascar and a you, vanilla made in Uganda. We can start competing yeah, yeah. in pricing. You should. You should. Why but, not? Uh, so this is how you stimulate uh, growth as, and, and your export earnings in, in, for the country as well. Makes sense. And talking about tourism, right? I mean, you mentioned about a lot of great stuff about uh, Ugandan tourism. So one of the uh, stereotype, or you call it as myth, right? So with African nations, uh, especially in the Western world, is like security, safety, and all those stuff comes into picture. I know Uganda is a very safe country, but uh, how, how do you break this barrier of stereotypes or the myths that, you know, uh, is it safe to go to Africa for tourists? I know a lot of people do travel now, but have you heard this any time before? You know, I think Uganda is safer than New York City sometimes. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> That's a big claim. That's a good claim, though. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, it's safety is there. Yeah. We have good secure measures in place. Incidents happen, like they happen all over the world. Mm. But we don't have a a crime rate that is yeah. like a, a mega crime rate. So the president has made sure the country, because we we brought a, his, his his leadership is looking at bringing a country back to stability, which is where it is, that where it, from where it was. Mm. So we're now at peace. Yeah. So your investments are safe. You have <coughs> guarantees that you're going to get your money back. You're allowed to take all your investments out. You get 10% tax holidays. Mm. So you can build, build a, a lodge in a national park. There's so many Europeans that have come and set up small lodges. Mm. And we, you can fly to the lodge. 
but we don't allow, uh, we have ecotourism. We're very careful. We have windy forests. We don't allow just destruction of the, of the natural resources mm. uh, just to build around the lakes. To, you know, we're not, we're not um, you know, um, one of the, the, the beaches of the world, no. But you can have a nice, beautiful, like Munyonyo, for example. It's a, a beautiful resort. It's a Commonwealth Speak resort built mm -hmm. by a, with, with government partnership with uh, Mr. Sudhir Ruparelia, an excellent businessman, and um, his family. And it, 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 all the conferences take place there where we just hosted mm -hmm. um, uh, 2,000, well, we hosted 5,800 people a day wow. feeding them, you know. So, and looking after them, and, and they were part of the, in the hotels, and, the, and there's a security. The entire world, all the South South nations, 127 um, delegations from uh, non aligned movement, G77 plus China, were all in Uganda. Yeah, no, that's for five days. Sense. So, from January 15 to January 22nd. So, I think this is, it shows, that shows how safe we are. And then it from is. there, you can go anywhere in Uganda, you don't have to ask permission, you don't have to have anybody watching you. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm going to go, as long as you've got a hotel booking, because you go five hours away by road and you get yeah. there and you say, there's no booking, well, where are you going to sleep? Because yeah. you're, yeah. in, you're, in, the, you're in, the, uh, in the jungle for a safari. And you get the beautiful Lake Victoria, you take a boat ride, and you then get onto the serene you know, River Nile, which is the source, the source is in Jinja. Then you have Lake Bonyonyu, you have the mountain lakes of the of Western Uganda, which is known like the Switzerland of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the Kapchora on the east, you have the Sipi Falls where all the coffee and the highlands are. So it's it's variety and we're yeah. a temperate country. So one can land in there and see too much different of Different places, you know, wherever you go. Places, and, yeah. and we have no humidity. Our temperatures are between 24 degrees and 28, 29 That's degrees heaven. all year round. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you know, you're, you've got the Rift Valley on one side and you've got the mountains yeah. on the other side. Brilliant, so, brilliant. Yeah. And, so uh, it's a must-visit country. It is indeed. That, that I can definitely see that. That's why I was uh, telling. Uh, and we have hotel rooms. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a stereotype. That's what we had to break. I mean, I heard that from many people when we talk about it because people choose Europe, people choose these countries to travel. But you know, there's so much there. Like it's not only um, what do you say? Like safaris. It's not only safaris, but no. beyond it's that, variety. It's there's a lot no. lot more. Africa is not only for safaris, right? No. You know. No, yeah. And I mean, you don't have to go to the, um, you know, beach beach countries, beach yeah. cities around the world. You can come and enjoy Lake Victoria. We have over 600 islands on Lake Victoria. Mm. You can come and see one or two or three of them. And the uh, hoteliers are building some, you know, hotels on those islands. You'll be able to go by boat. Then we have the Chimpanzee Island, called mm. Gamba Island. You can take a boat from Entebbe. Um, it's, it's a very unique experience. Brilliant. And the food and, 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 the, and the nightlife is also a, apparently a good tourist uh, attraction. That's brilliant. So if you and we have, have people from all over the world. Yeah. We have restaurants that are mushrooming all over uh, Kampala City. It's mm -hmm. so busy. Okay. In terms of uh, talking about business uh, element specific, specifically, uh, do you have a single window policy? Like if, if somebody wants to come down to Uganda and start the business. How difficult it is? How uh, easy it is? Like, no, what's your business policy? No, it's it's um, it's very uh, easy. We have something called uh, agency called Uganda Investment Authority, mm -hmm. it's known as the One Stop Center. Okay. You go there and you get all everything in one place. You need to open your bank account. You have to register. You have to get to the office, uh, book your registration, get a license. You can decide which projects you want to do, or you already have your project. And it's all, you don't have to go and sit in traffic and move from one building mm. to another, to another, another. And the other thing that we're doing bilaterally um, with the UK, we have an excellent relationship on that, is look at furthering our scholarships, education mm. with the United Kingdom, Ireland. Uh, and, you know, India uh, gives uh, Ugandans and uh, East Africa lo many, many uh, scholarships leaders, yeah. in many True. different fields. So we're able to get many of those um, uh, here as well. Brilliant. So and uh, of course, the other big area that we I cover is that I also represent, you know, President Museveni at the head of the Commonwealth with uh, for Uganda with His Majesty King Charles. And you know, Ganesh, uh, you talk about security and you talk about you know work people do. Um, His Excellency President Museveni, when he came to London in December 22, had an excellent re uh, meeting with His Majesty. 
And before that, it's so sad that Her Majesty passed away. Um, her, her Royal Highness, uh, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, went to Uganda in October 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, Prince Edward, was in Uganda. Okay. Uh, so I think, you know, that those shows that, that you know, we have... Uh, uh, but we know we have, everybody has differences of opinion in things, no, no, but um, we work together. Yeah, makes sense. So this is all great stuff that you spoke about, Mishaji. But uh, if I ask you, what are the challenges that you face as an ambassador for between the countries? Like, I know it's not it's not a plain road always, right? You you will have bumps. Every, every all of this is a challenge. So everything yeah. you do, you competition is huge in the world yeah, today. Okay. And technology, you know, I can speak this. And tomorrow, the Kenya will, my neighbors will say something else. Yeah, yeah. And then say, well, but then Ganesh, you know, say, well, should I go to Kenya, Uganda, Kenya? You know? <laughs> so you have to compete. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, um, and none of us, I, we have a good team here. We have visa officers here, we have immigration mm -hmm. officers, we have a, a trade expert, we have, we work with the diaspora, the Ugandans in the diaspora, who are our ambassadors out in the field. Mm -hmm. We try to embrace with, with everybody to, to, to have a, to make the small picture mm -hmm. uh, and, and the country, yeah. Uganda, yeah. of which I'm very, very proud to, to be a part of and represent and, mm -hmm. and be a Ugandan. Brilliant. Really so if, if um, you have to, in terms of like, you know, you're here for some more years, maybe, I don't know, uh, but um, what would be your top priorities for the next year, if I have to call out? So I know you spoke about bilateral relationships a lot. But, no, I think uh, I've covered it because I, I basically we want we want tourism. Okay. We want trade. Okay. We need to get these. We need to we need uh, the. We, for example, we have an envoy, Lord Poppert. Mm. He's a Ugandan trade envoy for the Prime Minister in the United Kingdom, and he's done so much. And he's a Ugandan by origin. Mm. And then you have the Mayor of Harrow. He's a Ugandan. And yeah, then, yeah. So work together with all the, all these all these friends of Uganda and we can in move projects we can the British may identify that they would like to build certain schools in Uganda mm. so we work together with them they may see what we want to do in terms of the scholarships to help build the health workers we would like you know um, uh, just recently I had the privilege and honor of meeting another young brilliant Ugandan um, Asian origin uh, uh, doctor, mm -hmm. uh, Shriti uh, Patani, and uh, she's been given an OBE mm -hmm. uh, and recognized for her work. And she yeah. went back to Uganda with her father and they found the shop where her father left. And it was a very emotional journey yeah. for, for her and her family. But they feel so good and they want to do something for Uganda. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are examples of one small example, but They've joined what all of us have done, my family and others, and where we'll attract you and others to come. Have a look at Uganda. For us, we're already back. We're established. This is Uganda is where we are. Yeah. Um, and uh, those those challenges you go to. So somebody says, okay, well, I think I really rather go west coast, east coast, go to uh, Nordic countries. I have to fight to make sure that Uganda. We we may try to make it change. Shine the pearl of Africa, mm -hmm. Uganda, as Winston Churchill called it, must shine again. It's already begun to shine, and we have to make it shine more. Yeah. And it's it's truly, um, it's green and it's uh, a beautiful heaven city. on earth. And yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's I I have uh, one quick uh, probably I don't know if it is tricky question, but uh, maybe interesting one though. So when this happened, you've spoken about uh, the refugees back then. A lot of them moved here, and we recently met in the 50 years of British Ugandan community as well. So, how is this community actually thinking about giving back to Uganda now? Are they are they willing to give in, give it back to, or do do they still have that scarf? I mean, the emotion that they have faced, the you know, the suffering from Uganda. Do they do they see it that way, or is it like more? How is that community looking at now? And how do you, as, a, as ambassador uh, to the country or the High Commissioner of Uganda here in UK, what's your take on that? And how do you strengthen this relationship? Now, I think I think there's a lot of... Uh, okay, you have to remember there's about 80,000 people who were expelled. Yeah. And, and they came to Leicester. Stansted, Leicester. Yeah. Uh, 
And a lot of them are very successful people now. And they've done extremely, extremely well. well. Yeah. And they're not going to relocate because that's your business now. Yeah. You're, you've already relocated. You're yeah. not going to relocate. But they have a lot of passion for Uganda. You go to uh, Leicester, you go to Wembley, you go to Harrow, you're going to eat Mogo. What is yeah. Mogo? Every East African knows Mogo. Mogo is cassava. Mm -hmm. Ah, you want matoki? What is matoki? Matoki is our green plantain. Mm -hmm. If you're from East Africa, you know that, and they, they serve it. Mm -hmm. Maru's bajias. What is Maru's bajias? It's a it's an East African. It's a Kenyan origin. Mm -hmm. It's the best bajia in the world, but people have it here in Russia. You go to Bobby's in Leicester. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Darmesh uh, Lakhani, Sanjay yeah. Foods, Atul yeah. Lakhani. Yeah. Then you've got uh, another Ugandan who left Jinja. Uh, you know, um, he's now put up a factory for, for girls in Uganda for sanitary towels, uh, Nikesh Kotecha uh, and his wife Moni. So, yes, people are giving back. I think there is not this negative stigma that was there. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's now uh, come by. And I think even maybe my own uh, appointment as a person uh, of, of Indian, Gujarati, Ugandan origin, going back to Uganda uh, helps uh, give confidence mm -hmm. uh, and that is a uh, you know the the leadership of president Museveni to have that vision to do that yeah make, makes sense and in terms of um, other relationship like you know one as i mentioned london is a financial capital i know you've spoken about uk as a fundamental thing and you spoke about other countries but while you you're one of those very influential high commissioners you go and connect with all the high commissions in london you speak to other people and how how do the other high commissions in London look at this relationship? Do they actually bring up more conversations about how we can make it better for Uganda? And are there any countries that are, that are looking like if you have to list out few countries who did in your tenure have shown a lot of interest towards Uganda? You guys, you have to remember. I've been very lucky. Yeah, I've uh, served in the president has has trusted me to serve and represent Uganda in many parts of the world. So yeah. when I'm here, we interact with the diplomatic community yeah. regularly. Okay, they're always not it's national day. So you meet, you get to know, so you talk, whatever, you know, your, your area of interest. And you learn also what they want. Yeah. And you can see what Uganda could do maybe in their country. Say sports. Yeah. We could learn so much from, you know, some of these countries that are doing so well. Uh, in sports, say in football or in tennis or in um, swimming, mm -hmm. you know, that we could maybe have some bilateral uh, relationship, training, mm -hmm. people could go there, come back, uh, the European and other countries that grow um, uh, grapes and make wine or champagne. Well, Uganda is growing grapes. Um, Maybe we can try to do like India did. Mm -hmm. Nasik, they've got bilateral arrangement, yeah. like, uh, sort of um, vineyard to vineyard relationship in Nasik, and where they're doing it in outside of Bombay. And then in Uganda, we could, we're learning to, to grow asparagus. And we've done that now, and it's mm -hmm. looking at export markets. So that's why I said we need the export market. We must get the trade treaty out and get the market for our product to compete with wherever asparagus comes from in the English country garden, which is mm -hmm. also very beautiful. So they also, the British have to also look after their own product. So um, yes, you learn a lot uh, from the Baltic countries, you know, carbon credit, because you know, we've got to learn that in agriculture, we can look at the carbon credit mm -hmm. and then say, okay, there's so much carbon being generated here. Mm -hmm. And then the companies that are from say, uh, Nordic countries where there's very little opportunity able to sell that credit mm -hmm. and, and enhance their businesses so it's a question of being innovative as the president Museveni says spectacles of vision uh, or to see the opportunity and to identify that so in your interaction with your other colleagues that's what you discuss in, yeah. and uh, and you see you know and, and also you know when there's it's politics or business or anything you see how you can work together because we're one world. Yeah. Helping each other. Yeah, makes sense. And um, one more area that everyone talks about is, is the automation, you know, technology, AI, all that stuff. So in, in terms of that, like, you know, how, how, how is Uganda doing in that area? Like, 
Well, do yes. you see uh, technology picking up oh, yes. uh, well in Uganda as well? We have a we have a brilliant uh, youth population. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sixty-five to seventy percent of our population is under thirty-five years old. That's brilliant. And they are so good on this technology. You know, I I just give you an example. The other day, Airtel is in Uganda mm -hmm. and competes with MTN, and Leica Mobile is also coming in with uh, uh, from Sri Lanka. So you can already see from three companies, I've told you, India, yeah. Sri Lanka, yeah. South Africa, yeah. they're all there. So you can see the market <coughs> business opportunity. Anyway, my phone, when I landed in Uganda, wasn't picking up the signal. Mm -hmm. I went to this Airtel uh, agent, and he opened my phone. A young guy, he must have been 20 years old. <laughs> and he just, he just, do the, he just tuck, 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 and yeah. within, you know, five minutes, the thing was working. Uh, working. Yeah. I had no issue, you know. <laughs> I was sitting there struggling with it, you know. Yeah. Um, so, no, in terms of IT technology and huge scope for, for artificial intelligence. But, you know, artificial intelligence and IT, you've got to make sure you have your infrastructure. That's if true. you don't have stable electricity, how are we going to cope? So, Uganda, we host 1.4 million refugees. Mm. All right? Our policy is a very open door policy. But the area is developing. The whole, region. they're part of Uganda now. They're part of our local government. We government, they are part of our government budget. Okay? So you've got to have infrastructure in place, in businesses, where you employ people, where you create housing. The electricity has to be stable. Mm -hmm. So agricultural, uh, waste, biomass, hydro. These are all things that we're doing now in Uganda. Very soon, I think Uganda will have uh, 1,500 to 2,000 megawatts of, of, of power. Brilliant. So, but now, you've got to have the transmission lines to make sure you're connected right to the deep villages. Because farmers use their phone to say, okay, what's the price of tomatoes there today? <laughs> because he's going to sell in, in Kampala. Yeah. So that guy will add on the transport, this, this, this. So it's... It's techno it's, and they, in, in other countries, they're using drones yeah. to carry medicines, to carry blood samples. True, true. But you have to have infrastructure in place, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's got to be a priority. And that's one of the focuses. And that's where UKEF has been a great support to us and EU as well. Brilliant. And uh, just recently, Uganda hosted the EU-Uganda uh, Investment Forum, Partnership for Global Trade. Mm -hmm. And that was another great opportunity uh, under the leadership of President Museveni, uh, the EU ambassadors in Uganda and the EU uh, commission in Kampala. Yeah. Okay. I, I have one more uh, interesting question as, again, as a diplomat. You probably are, di um, you know, talking about the rest of the world having this peace as one of the main criteria as these days, right? You know, because we have seen, we, we have been seeing conflict in some of the countries. Middle East was struggling and, you know, you know, some of the European countries struggled recently as well. And there's also the rest of the world who are facing big time conflicts. So what's your take on all this? Like, you know, how, how Uganda looks at peace? You, you said like Uganda is a pretty much open country. We allow people and, and all. So what's what's the theme there? Like, well, what, we what did make it happen? Yeah. Well, leadership. Okay. Vision. Today we, are, we have a strength in the army. Our army is one of the strongest armies in Africa, which is supporting the helping with the British and the Americans in Somalia. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, problems within the, the Great Lakes region. So we're an island. You know, again, we are trying to support the different peace and stability moves in our region. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we focus in our, in our area. You know, you go to look at your own yeah. space. So very sense. much, very much, because you... We, you've got to have peace and stability to do the business. Yeah. How, how will, you, you know, you and your family come for a holiday? Yeah. You will say, no, not yet, yeah. let's wait. Right now, I'm telling you, you have absolutely nothing to worry. Yeah, brilliant. And how, how the relationship, I know we, we spoke about UK and all, that, that's brilliant. But in terms of uh, most of the world is suffering with the neighboring relationships. How about Uganda and the neighboring region? How, no, how is it? I, I just told you we have an East African community yeah. of 450 million people. We have a bilateral, we have a trade treaty in the East African Trade Treaty where we can export our products within each other. Okay. We have the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement where we can also export our products duty free, quota free within the continent. So whether you're in 
uh, Tunisia or whether you're in South Africa, you're in Africa, and if you have the products, you qualify, you, 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 you can export. Well, again, infrastructure. So now Uganda Airlines flies directly from Entebbe to Lagos. Yeah. Five hours you're there. Ethiopian Airlines goes from Addis Ababa to the West Africa, and so on, crisscross. So inter-Africa, just like you have United States, just yeah. like you have in, in UK, you can go to Glasgow, you can go to Scotland, you can go here, there, everywhere. That's what we are, we are now putting into mm, place. Makes so sense. very, very important. And that will create even more uh, opportunity for investment, for the world to come into the continent. Minerals, we have every mineral in the world that you can think of is in uh, our, our region. Brilliant. I think considering the leadership that you said, like, you know, how, how is it possible, peace and conflict resolution and all that stuff, because it's one of the major topics in the world at the moment, right? I think Uganda should actually host a peace summit. And oh, we already Jenny. have hosted a peace summit. That's why where we did the NAM summit, there was a peace okay, summit okay. there. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, how, how long was that? Like, is it like a oh, few years ago? It was a few years ago, yes. Uh, but, yeah. but that set the pace. Yeah, that's good. That's brilliant. And, uh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm getting into the last uh, se segment of the interview, but uh, I just want to understand from you in terms of, yeah, time, I'm sure. I, I'm watching your time. So, <clears throat> how, how is... Um, like if you have to come back and speak to other country communities here, you mentioned, you know, you have Ugandan community relationships. So what do you, what do, you do to connect with the Ugandan communities? And do, do you actually hear from them a lot uh, to come back to the country? Or like, when I say come back to the country, not really physically, but, you know, bringing... It no, no, we work very closely with the diaspora. We want the diaspora to, to visit, come to Uganda, to okay. invest their money there, okay. and to visit. If they don't want to invest, they come with their families, show the roots, just mm -hmm. like the Ugandan Asians are doing. They're showing yeah. their family their roots and coming. Some get interested and stay, like Dr. Nick Kotecha. Yeah. He came and he put up a factory. Uh, a lot of us have gone back, you know, with it. So... It's a, it's a, what, I, think, I think we're a very unique country, mm. actually, with unique leadership, unique people, unique foods, um, very friendly, very open. Yeah, it is. And, uh, really. The weather is superb. And, uh, we try to, we're trying really hard, you know, to, to be a, a good competitor in the world and uh, be proud of, of what's been achieved uh, in the last 35, 37 years. Indeed, you must be so. proud of it. And any, any last word, words for the business people, especially because a lot of my audience are Indian business well, people. So. All of you, Gujarati, <laughs> all your money is safe. If you speak some Swahili, in English, I'll say, okay, come. You don't have a regret. Your money is safe. We have, uh, um, you know, your 30% returns on investment because in business, that's what you want to see. You could negotiate a 10-year tax break, depending on what project you do. So come and explore. Explore Uganda. Heaven on Earth, gifted by nature. A pearl of Africa and uh, part of the Commonwealth. We are chairman of the non-aligned movement, uh, G77 plus China. Um, the voice of Africa, lead, good leadership with President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni and the government and the people of Uganda. And um, you keep, you know, they say that once you come and taste the waters of the River Nile, you keep coming back for more. So <laughs> those of you who haven't been, uh, come and try. And those of you who have already been, bring your friends, come and yeah. have a holiday and... Uh, Keep coming back. You have one guess for sure. We are coming for sure. Excellent. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy to be Thank you so that. much for your time. I know you are. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking your time and giving uh, this time to us because I know your precious time. It's, no, it's, it's very fine. difficult no, to get no, your no, no, no. calendars. This is all part of Uganda, yeah, yeah, yeah. part of friendship, part of bilateral. Yeah. And, I, you know, Ganesh, you, I mean, one of the things I didn't mention, I have a colleague here and she's a member of Rotary, and that's oh, yeah. how I met you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. You came to Uganda House for a Rotarian. And we, we, did, we recently did the Rotary Peace uh, Conference in London, and that's what I was referring to. I think I will propose back to Rotary that we should do Peace Conference in Uganda. Yes. Because yes. there's so much to learn from so, East okay. African nations. So. Yes, and uh, in India, if those are the businessmen you have, if you're members of CII, FIKI, uh, and the Indian Business other Network. chambers of yeah. commerce and yeah. network, please... Uh, feel free to visit Uganda. Kindly 
you know, the history, you know, other countries have, have had bad history. You know, Germany is rebuilt post their very bad history. Uh, many countries. Uganda including. And uh, we are a nation on the rise. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Thank you so much, Namishaji. Thanks for your time. Pleasure.